Every time I make a new body of artwork, I like to take a close look at the pottery and critique it. I write down ideas that inspire the work and I self-critique before I make another body of work. There's a quote I really like by Jackson Pollock. He was a painter in the mid 20th century who painted these abstract, huge paintings. And he says, painting is self-discovery. Every good artist paints what he is. I like that quote because that's how we all start when we make art. We're, we're coming from a place of what we like and what inspires us or maybe inspired by nature, like this mountain cup that I made. What most art misses is that, you know, a painting or a sculpture just hangs on the wall and you go to a museum or a gallery to see it or it hangs on your wall at home. It never really gets as personal as pottery. You don't really touch it. You don't bring it to your lips or your face. It's a, you know, how many things do we let touch our mouth? It's such an intimate relationship that, that I think is powerful with pottery. There's another quote I really like by a potter who made pottery in Minnesota for about 60 or 70 years. When I met him, he was 89 years old and he was still making about five or 6,000 pots a year. His name was Warren McKenzie. And he says, unlike a painting or a sculpture, Pottery will be handled and mishandled and washed and scraped with eating utensils. And if a pot cannot withstand such treatment, it fails no matter how appealing it might be to the eye. I like to embody those ideas when making something like a cup, something that people are gonna put in and out of their dishwasher and drink from. And the, the shape and the style of a cup, it affects the taste. Someone who's serious about drinking wine or drinking coffee or drinking a dram of whiskey versus a lowball glass of whiskey, they know that that's gonna affect the taste. So when I make a small cup like this, uh, I want it to feel stout and wide and I'm thinking of someone drinking tea or whiskey or a cocktail, as opposed to a taller, more slender cup where someone might use this every day for a glass of water, or a glass of milk and their hands is gonna wrap around the spiral. There's another quote I love by another potter named Bernard Leach. Leach wrote a book called A Potter's Book in 1940. He wrote that book after 33 years spent making a living as a full-time potter. He says, curves for beauty, angles for strength. So when I'm making pottery, I'm thinking about what's most beautiful. People are buying these pots based off a photograph. Most of the pottery ships out globally. We don't sell anything here at our studio, actually. People are gonna look at a photo of this pot and decide whether or not they wanna live with it and have it in their home. I, I encourage round textures, the touch of my hand, the roundness of these finger marks and the roundness of the lip because it's not only beautiful, but this is gonna be used every day and washed and sharp angles chip more easily. If the pot cannot withstand treatment and if it chips, it's gonna fail no matter how beautiful it is. That's the nature of pottery. You wanna balance between beauty and utility. These marks are from dipping the pot down into a bucket of glaze. There's a team of workers who helped me. Cortland is filming this right now, and these are probably Cortland's finger marks from dipping this pot down into glaze. Another thing that Warren McKenzie said, he said it's only when you feel the touch of the hand of the potter that communication truly exists. I used to think that this was all about me and my, my hand in the art, and I was wrong. As you start to build a business as an artist, you need to continually be able to offer affordable pottery to people, lower the price for people, otherwise you're not gonna have a real business. Things are gonna be too expensive, they're gonna be worried they're gonna break this cup. So it's not about my hand, it's about the touch of the hand, the touch of a fingerprint. You can actually see the prints of the finger of the artist in this. Now in this case, it was me, but what's important is the touch of the hand. So these are styles that I've created they're towards a standard of quality from a catalog of work that I've made, but it's not about me as a potter, it's about the touch of the hand of the potter. I literally have towards a standard tattooed on my leg. This is the first chapter of a potter's book by Bernard Leach. So everyone who makes art here at Cherico Pottery, again, I'm currently throwing everything and teaching our team how to do these glazes, but it's about putting pottery out into the world. So all of these pots are part of a, a type of sale I've been doing called a grab bag sale. So someone could just buy a cup, something without a handle, and they'll probably end up getting one of these spiral cups or a pair of them, but there are 10 more high-end pieces that I'd like to talk about because these pieces are a little different. They still have indentations. Will, another pottery studio technician who's here, is learning the texture of, of carving these indentations. And so these are inspired by by asteroids or 
or moon surfaces. And there's this other quote I love, uh, it's by Neil deGrasse Tyson. He says, he's talking about Vincent van Gogh's The Starry Night. And he says, how do I feel about the fact that The Starry Night, the painting by Vincent van Gogh, isn't realistic? That Vincent painted this, this swirly painting. Um, and when I make these pieces, they're inspired by colors of galaxies and, and nebulas, this glaze chemistry that I, I designed years ago. Neil deGrasse Tyson says, I don't want the artist to paint reality because I have that via my own telescope. I want and I need the artist to take me to new places. And the place that Vincent van Gogh took me was how, not how the universe looked, but how it felt. And the more of us who feel the universe, the better off we'll be in this world. It's this beautiful speech by Neil deGrasse Tyson. So in this batch of pottery, there are 10 of these cups that are much more intricate and much more expensive, but I put them in with a large batch of pottery because someone who buys from this, this listing is going to get a very high-end expensive piece. I even decided to put in one of my Neptune mugs that retail for a uh, uh, extremely high price because they're so incredibly difficult to make and far more valuable. So someone is going to purchase in this listing and get one of my best pieces. Remember, curves for beauty, angles for strength. This is a very strong curve with an angle here and this mug just feels stronger and it's much more intricate, inspired by the planet Neptune hung sideways in the kiln and the retail price is far higher than any of these other simple cups but if you make art that's something that i've noticed is, is sometimes it's it's great to offer something that is much more high-end for for people who would never otherwise be able to afford it so i do a sale and i throw this in with the sale and someone who could never afford to buy this individually is going to get it and be surprised by it so that's what i do every month that's my process of self-critique try to figure out how to make art that is both useful and beautiful and to take people to new 